Mr. Narayanan Subramaniam, Chief Technology Officer of Eugenie.ai. Thank you so much for speaking with us. It's the first time you're speaking to us at Polymer Update. Pleasure to have you. Uh, let's dive right into the conversation. Can you explain in further mm -hmm. detail how Eugene.ai's decision framework utilizing AI technology mm -hmm. contributes to industrial operational efficiency and reliability and how it enables industrial organizations to maximize the value of their assets and uh, processes, please? Sure, absolutely. Thank you, Pratiksha, for having me here. So let me get into the uh, meat of the question right away, right? See, the foundational aspect of Eugenie's AI-based technology in this area is really around high-velocity anomaly detection, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So what this does is allows us to detect anomalous patterns in assets uh, which are used in industry and processes and so on and so forth. For example, you know, excessive vibrations of a motor, excess current which is drawn from the grid because it's operating inefficiently, right? So. Um, you know, excess talk which is taken to turn something. I mean, these are things which are used in industry all over the place, right? And many of these anomalies, if you really look at it, are precursors to um, temporary failures, faults, and eventually costly downtimes to industry, right? So what does Eugenie do? We use, we use a lot of this data which is fed by sensors around these anomalies, right, in order to predict the likelihood of downtime. Now, for processes, so what does Eugenie do is we use the same analogy to detect anomalies in a process line. For example, in a steel manufacturing process, right, why is it that the throughput is not coming out as efficiently as before? For mm -hmm. example, in tons of steel per hour, right? Um, this is true even in chemical industries or in the oil and gas or mining industry. So it's exactly the same analogy. So what we do is that we take these parameters, we look at the process line as a whole, look at the throughput that it's, that it's supposed to generate, and using data and AI, we figure out the relationships and how to optimize the throughput. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. One more level, if I take it, is that you know, if you look at anomalies, if you look at processes and the anomalies related to processes, when you run something inefficiently, you're quite likely to emit more. Take your car, for example, right? If you don't change your motor oil, right? Or if you don't feel enough air in the tires, right? Or if you don't lubricate, you know, certain aspects of the vehicle, you're going to consume a lot more fuel than before, leading to more emissions. Exactly the same analogy applies to assets and processes in industry today. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's what we focus on. How do we now use AI-based technologies to make the process line more efficient, we try, use sensors to track emissions and we then mitigate all of them put together. So that's um, really what we do, focusing on the now to reduce emissions as opposed to a fallacy of a future of carbon credits mm -hmm. and carbon trading down the road. So that's what we do. Right. I'm going to delve more deeper into this conversation. Sure. Can you also elaborate on the methodology and technical aspects of UGD.AI's digital twin-based product and mm -hmm. its four-step framework sure. for monitoring and mitigating emissions and what are the pillars of this framework, please? Okay, absolutely, right. So Eugenie today is primarily focused on scope one, mm -hmm. that is direct emissions of methane, carbon dioxide, nitrogen oxides and so on, and to some extent on scope two because we also monitor assets which behave inefficiently then draw more power from the grid, right. So we're primarily focused on that. What we do in our SaaS-based AI offer, it's a cloud-based AI offer with you know, domain-specific algorithms, is that we use terrestrial sensors from industries, right? So pumps, motors, you know, compressors, uh, air blowers, furnace temperatures, so a variety of sensors to measure all kinds of stuff, including environmental parameters and chemical parameters. For example, what's the chemistry of iron ore going into the sintering and blast furnace mm -hmm. process today, right? In addition to getting these sensors, we also are one of the very few people who do a convert solution where we take sensors from satellites and from drone technologies. So infrared imaging of methane emissions or carbon dioxide emissions, right? Effluence in ponds or lake, which is just an output of an industrial process. We take all of these, right? And we combine them together in our SaaS-based AI platform to do a couple of things, right? The real pillars are around collecting the data, so track, trace, okay, 
what are the patterns that we can detect in AI from this multitude of data related to emissions and process throughput, right? Um, optimize, how do we optimize it, right? Reduce emissions by keeping your throughput the same or reduce your throughput and emissions together, which is a much harder problem, right? And monitor. So these are the things that we all use, right? These are the foundational pillars of that on which our SaaS-based AI platform mm -hmm. resides on to control emissions and to optimize your throughput. Yeah, I'm going to pick up on the point of track, trace and optimize mm -hmm. and talk about climate change. Uh, so can you provide insight into Eugenie.ai's perspective on the multifaceted nature of addressing climate change because that is utmost important now mm -hmm. and the limitations of implementing a one-dimensional solution to such a complex issue and how does Eugenie.ai approach this problem and what measures does it take to address it holistically please? Absolutely, right. If you all step back, right, as industries and technologies and so on, so the issues of climate change can only be partly addressed to any variety of technology that we take, right, um, here or now. We have to reduce emissions and it's partly a technology problem, partly a human related issue. So if I come to the technology part, right, what we really do is, look, emissions, carbon emissions is just one part. Then there is water, you know, effluence, then there is impact, direct impact to the ecology and environment due to pollution. So the, so this climate change thing is completely holistic and interdisciplinary. What we are focused on in Eugenie is really three things related to climate emissions, wastage reduction, and removal of unnecessary redundancy associated with wage stage, right? So when things don't go down so often or fail, mm -hmm. you need less redundancy, inventory, stockpiles and so on, which also consume resources, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. If you make things more efficient, your emission footprint is less, right? So these are the things that we really focus on to help industries to reduce that footprint now, here and now, yeah. right? Now, while we wait for new technology, so in the past I worked on electric vehicles and IoT. So a number of solutions which you are using here in Delhi today is based on the technology that I helped to build. Oh, how wonderful. Right. So, um, you know, while there are different things which are coming in, um, renewables, green hydrogen, solar, wind hybrid and so on and so forth, it's very imperative and our focus is how do we help companies and society today to bridge the transition from where we are now to a renewables future, a clean green future, but we have to reduce the emission footprint now. We can't wait for full adoption of renewables, which is going to lower the footprint, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's impractical, right? Absolutely. Now, it will take time for this transition. And as COPs and all these meetings go, right, financing and, you know, all those issues people are still negotiating about, right? And action has to be taken to translate all of this. So, really, how do we control emissions now? This is our viewpoint. How do we work with the industries of today, with the economies and societies of today? And we are a very key part in this transition towards green and renewables. And even when we go to green and renewables, for example, if green hydrogen picks up, the fundamental principles that Eugenie resides on, reduce downtime, improve process efficiency, reduce emissions, is still applicable in the new clean environment because in a growing population where we have to also reduce per capita energy consumption, improving efficiencies and reducing emissions even in the new clean green world is also needed. Right, right. right. So that's what we are doing. We believe that this is the approach to take as opposed to carbon offsets and so on and so forth. Carbon offset costs are just going to go through the roof. People are going to be pressured from moving away from that fallacy towards emission reduction now. And that's why we believe we can help industry and community and society. Thank you so much for uh, speaking with us and thank you so much for watching. We have much more for you from the Race 7 conference. Stay tuned to Polymer Update.